Welcome to TM Recaps, there will be a spoiler ahead. Watch out and take care. Today I'm going to talk about, the sci-fi fantasy superhero film called Ant-Man and Wasp, Quantumania. The movie begins with the appearance of Janet, who was trapped in the quantum realm long ago. She encounters some unusual monsters there that are undoubtedly unheard of in our world. Fortunately, someone quickly intervened and saved Janet, as she was about to be overpowered by several of these monsters. Afterwards, the action shifts to the present, when Scott Lang is seen enjoying great popularity with the general public after joining the Avengers. Scott was able to show the world that, despite his past as a criminal, he was in reality a wonderful person. He now has a happy life with his new family and Hope Van Dyne. Hope carried on his father's legacy. She founded an extremely popular company and gave it the name Pym Van Dyne Foundation. One day, Scott received a call from the police while he was at an event. They claimed that Cassie, Scott's eldest daughter, had been detained when she shrank the police car and caused trouble. Scott and Hope then take Cassie to Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne as a result of this occurrence. There, following their meal together, Cassie begins showcasing the new device she and Hank had made in secret. The invention is a tool that can link them to the quantum realm. Thus, all they need to do to explore is send drones. Cassie is convinced of this since she frequently communicates with the subatomic realm. But, as Cassie was about to send a signal to the quantum realm, Janet abruptly shut off the device, stating that the quantum realm was a far more dangerous world compared to the present one. Then, she asked Cassie not to activate the device again. However, as Janet was being interrogated and they were talking, the device unexpectedly turned on by itself again, and then this extraordinary thing happened. Everyone and everything in the room, without exception, enters the quantum realm. Furthermore, they were divided into two groups due to their geographical location. Whatever happened, Janet told them to leave when a plane flew over them. Meanwhile, Scott and Cassie are perplexed by the quantum realm. Even a creature that resembled the sun tried to assault them. Fortunately, when they were in a state of fear, another creature, an indigenous, suddenly came and saved them both. But still, it turned out that the strange-speaking monster had led Scott and Cassie to its base. The indigenous forced the two of them to drink a red liquid there. The drink is not a poison, but it is what makes it possible for them to understand every language spoken in this world and interact with one another. One of the creatures, Quaz, has the ability to read Scott's mind in a single glance, which surprised Scott much. After a lengthy discussion about why humans have seven holes in their bodies, Gentora, the group's leader, asked Scott and Cassie to leave. She also mentioned someone known as the Conqueror in the Quantum Realm. And the Conqueror enjoys searching for live species from other worlds, such as Scott and Cassie, who come from above. The Conqueror colonized Gentora and the others from their own world. Gentora didn't want to take the chance by allowing Scott and Cassie stay at her base, because she was afraid that the Conqueror would approach her people. The Quantum Realm is a highly dangerous place, so in the meantime, Janet helps her family locate Scott and Cassie. However, not long after that, they were confronted by a collection of strange creatures from the Quantum Realm. It was assumed that Janet engaged in an epic battle with them, but it turned out that the creature had been Janet's buddy in the past, when she was trapped there. Then Janet and her family finally got a ride, making it simpler for them to locate Scott and Cassie. When Hank and Hope arrived at a location that could be described as a bar in the quantum realm, Janet also gave them a drink, which instantly allowed them to understand what the creatures there were talking about. Janet traveled there in order to meet Lord Kryler, her dearest friend, whom she had not seen in a while. Janet turns to Kryler for help in finding Scott and Cassie, who she thinks are lost in the quantum realm. Regrettably, Kryler, Janet's only best friend and someone who dared to question the Conqueror, is now on the Conqueror's side. When Janet returned to Earth, he bowed to him just to get a position. Instead of helping Janet, Kryler reported her arrival to the Conqueror and then ordered his men to arrest Janet's family. 
After successfully defeating half of Kryler's troops, they decided to flee and search for Scott and Cassie. The scene then moves and again shows Scott and troops Gentoras, who are immediately attacked by the Conqueror's men. Scott's initial plan was to flee in order to save his daughter. Cassie's heart, however, told her otherwise when she saw Gentora's entourage overwhelmed by the Conqueror's troops. And, like it or not, Scott got involved in the fight. They were shocked by Darren's sudden appearance and his very different personality. In the 2015 film Ant-Man, Darren slipped away, prompting him to enter the Quantum Realm. The Conqueror discovered Darren's body, which was later revived and given the name Amodala's Muda K. Janet began telling stories about who is the Conqueror on the ship. So, the Conqueror, whose name is Kong, is someone who saves Janet at the start of the film. So, after Kong the Conqueror saved Janet from the previous monster, Janet repaid him by saving him. Because Kong the Conqueror is dying at the time due to a cash accident. As time passed and they were alone in the Quantum Realm, Janet and Kong the Conqueror began to team up to revive Kang's ship. Kong the Conqueror had told Janet that his ship could travel to any universe and anywhere. And if it's fixed, Janet can travel wherever she wants. As a result, they try their hardest, and their efforts are not in vain in the end. Janet and Kong the Conqueror were able to create an energy core, allowing Kang's ship to restart. Returning to Scott and Cassie, they are now prisoners in Kang's kingdom. Scott finally encountered Kong the Conqueror there. He asks for extra help by asking that Scott return with the ship's energy core and threatens to kill Cassie if Scott does not comply with his orders. Scott immediately obeys the orders and will take the core energy as a good father who is willing to sacrifice for his child. Scott's only job is to travel to the energy core and return it to its original form. But Scott needed to hurry because the longer he stayed in there, the worse things would get. Scott was confused by his body's sudden transition into several parts after shrinking and attempting to enter the energy core. Scott saw the possibilities for himself there. Because there is a probability storm if it is near the core of the multiverse engine. So, any decision or move Scott makes will be recorded and clearly displayed in front of him. Because their thoughts were inconsistent, Scott's self-image began to riot. Janet and the others, on the other hand, have finally arrived at the ship's energy core after a long journey. Hope, who was aware of Scott's existence, decided to participate in the energy core immediately. Fortunately, when Scott was struggling due to the riots caused by his illusionary shadows, he soon realized that his daughter was in danger because she had been taken prisoner by Kong the Conqueror. Scott is then motivated by this, and the other shadows can cheer him on and cooperate to help Scott take the core energy. When it appeared that Scott wouldn't make it, Hope showed up and immediately took Scott with her to work together to retrieve the ship's energy core. Unfortunately, when they reunited and obtained the energy core, Scott was still worried about his daughter's condition and was hesitant to hand over the core to Janet. Janet replied that she had seen a monster acting like a god. Kong, on the other hand, explains that he is only trying to kill himself, or a version of himself living in another multiverse, which could destroy the entire multiverse at any point in the future. However, Janet claims that Kong has killed countless innocent humans across other multiverses. But Kong persists in his desire to erase time. Outside, Hank meets Scott and Hope, who have just woken up from fainting spells. Hank is not alone there, but he is accompanied by his clever pet ants. It turns out that the ants went through the same quantum hole but emerged thousands of years later because of time dilation. They eventually evolved and attempted to contact Hank via the earpiece. Hank's ant civilization was very advanced at the time. For thousands of years, these ants developed and evolved to form civilizations. But where they were at the moment, the ants had only been through one day. Meanwhile, Cassie, who was being moved to prison, managed to escape and immediately save Gentora. They immediately summoned Gentora's troops, who were stationed outside Kang's headquarters after successfully releasing Gentora from prison. Gentora and her troops will now do whatever they can to eliminate Kang's troops. 
while Cassie fights Modok one on one. On the other hand, we see Kong the Turer once more preparing his ship to leave the Quantum Realm. From the outside, Scott began to transform into a giant and lead the native creatures in the attack on Kang's headquarters. Meanwhile, Gentora can finally join all of her troops while inviting them to take their place. They then started a war and fought Kong, the Conqueror. After successfully defeating Imodioke by transforming into a giant, Cassie advises Imodioke to become a better person, just like the Avengers. Meanwhile, noticing Kang's ship is about to launch, Scott and Hope finally collaborate to destroy Kang's escape plan. Kong the Conqueror is disgusted by what Scott and the others have done. Finally, Kong the Conqueror intervened and defeated them all. Seeing that the indigenous creatures were unable to fight Kang's strength, the superhero family immediately took action to fight Kong the Conqueror. While the three superhero powers were still outmatched by Kong the Conqueror, Hank Pym appeared with his combat ants. Kong the Conqueror was finally defeated thanks to Hank's incredibly powerful ant powers, as, as well as Mudok, who sacrificed himself. Mudok, who was dying, said that at least he had changed into a better person. Janet immediately informed all of them, stating that she had succeeded in creating a portal to return to Earth. Except for Scott, Kong the Conqueror suddenly appeared, causing an unavoidable fight between the two of them. Fortunately, just as Scott was about to be cornered, Hope appeared and immediately assisted Scott in fighting Kong. Kong, the Conqueror, was certainly doomed in the end. They both then returned to Earth. Scott is now back on Earth, living a very normal and happy life with his superhero family. But Scott still remembers Kang's words, that if he doesn't get out of there, his other self will wreck the multiverse. But he's trying not to think too much about things that haven't happened yet. Then, in the post credit scene, we see three of Kang's twins, Ramatut, Immortus, and the other, which we're not sure about. However, many rumors claim that if the name is futuristic, if you know it, please share it in the comments section below. But, in essence, they were discussing Kang's punishment and exile. Kang, the Conqueror, who is currently in the Quantum Realm, is dying. So it's not certain that Kong, with whom Scott fought, is dead. Furthermore, the three Kong leaders are now summoning all Kangs from various multiverses and timelines to the gathering held by these three Kong leaders. In the last scene, we see Loki with Mobius, who appears to be watching Kong as he explains about the time machine. Thank you for watching. Finally, if you enjoyed the film, please leave a comment, like it, and subscribe.